is a master's student, an entrepreneur, an author, and an award winner. Recently, he flew to China to present a mathematical model that he formulated for his master's of science in sustainable process engineering. With the South African economy struggling to grow, there has never been a better time to encourage students to think out of the box. Only a week ago, you'd recall that the South African Reserve Bank reported a 0% growth forecast in 2016, meaning that there are tougher times ahead of us. He joins us this morning here in our studios. And I'm going to go to the studio. that you visited us this morning. Thank you. Thank Am you. I getting there? Yeah, my, you are. Is my vendor good? Yeah. All right. No, thank you very much for your time, Mumeleli. Um, you grew up in a village in Limpopo. Yes, But what inspired your mind those days? And where do you get all of this inspiration from? Um, to be quite honest with you, when I was still young, um, when I'm still back at home, I was not as inspired. Going to school, I was just going to school for the sake of going to school because that's what, what, that's what was expected of me. Mm. It's only when um, I got the opportunity to actually study at, at the University of uh, Vets and that's where everything mm. changed. But, but is it really the case? Because I was just uh, going over your, your, your profile now, yes. but you were one of the best performers in metrics. So you can it just really go into school for the sake of going to school? No, obviously you, 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 you want to make your parents happy, so you will put in the work. Obviously you want to, 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 to pass. I mean, you, you, you'll have people who, who are actually going and then coming, mm. going and coming. And then when they come, they're actually driving. and So you're like, okay, maybe if I sort of put in the work, I will also find myself in that kind of position. Mm. But in terms of the details of what happens on the other side, I didn't have those details. Mm. So it's only when I came into the University of Vets and then I see all these people coming from different backgrounds mm. and, and, and you can see these guys are key, you know, these guys can do these kind of things. Mm. And then obviously when you attend um, sort of talks, because in the university you have different societies that actually invites different people from industry, business people, etc. Then you realize there's actually much more one can do in this life. And, and, and then... Mm. And it yeah. must have been quite a difficult journey for you because you're saying that the only language that you spoke back then was it's a and mm -hmm. you, you had to, to adapt to speaking English, yeah, attending yeah. classes in English. It was difficult, mm -hmm. but you managed to make it. Yeah, the thing is, um, from my area, almost everyone speaks Venda, mm -hmm. right? So even the, the, the teachers, they will teach you, even in the English class, they will actually... And translate to exactly. Venda. So written English was not as bad, but then the ability to now have a conversation with someone in English was um, a bit problematic. So when I came into Feds, I figured um, if I don't work on this, um, I'm going to have a problem mm. in the sense that now the only people you, that you can hang out are the people who speak Svenda because the other um, people, you, for you to communicate with them, you need to communicate with them with English mm. because you don't know their languages, mm. etc. In class, you, you, if you want to ask a question, you need to ask um, in obviously English. in English yeah. and then you can't be now putting commas. Mm. Every time you, you, you say a word, you say. Yeah. All right. Now, let us fast forward everything to now. Mm. You recently flew to China to present a mathematical model mm. that you formulated for your Master's of Science in Sustainable Process Engineering. Huh? English. <laughs> you make it sound. <laughs> you make it sound. Yeah, so after completing my, my undergraduate degree, um, obviously um, I finished it in record time, um, I had an opportunity to pursue my master's degree in sustainable process engineering, which is sort of a branch of chemical engineering. And that's, um, I, my supervisor is Professor Tokozani Majosi. Uh, he's actually one of the best um, in this field globally. So he gave me a project, so he, we do mathematical modeling. So um, I was building a, a, a model. My, the, the, the topic of my work is sequence-dependent changeovers as a water minimization technique in multi okay. batch process. <laughs> so he gave me a, a project to do. And then the project, I'm supposed to build a model that sort of um, optimizes uh, multi-purpose batch processes. So, you know, um, in the world of academia, you need to go around, uh, the, all, every year there is some sort of an international academic conference where people from all over the world who are actually working in the same field meet and then obviously share knowledge and obviously discuss um, sort of 
the direction that they're supposed to take in that field. So my work was um, accepted for, for an oral presentation in a conference in China. So I flew there with my supervisor. And then when I got there, I met people from different places, obviously all over the world, people from New Zealand, people from the US, people from all over the and world. And how did actually. the presentation go? The presentation was, because um, I, okay, I did, in, during my undergraduate, I actually attended a lot of programs to try to improve my speaking. One of them was debating, the other one was Toastmasters, etc. So for me, um, I've had, I can say, enough practice in terms of presenting. Okay. So when I, when I went there, I was like, okay, you're coming a long way. You can't just come here and play games. Mm. So um, I made sure that obviously my, my, my presentation is, is legit. It's it's proper. All right. Just a quick one on this one. You okay. also created your own chemical. Are you perhaps planning to take it to store, to stores? Um, yeah, the, the chemical, because I'm running a shoe cleaning uh, mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. called Taylor Clinic, and then I'm using uh, my own sort of detergent that I formulated. Okay. So now um, the, the, the process of putting it to stores, you need to first comply with the SABS, right? Mm -hmm. And then for you to comply with SABS, it's actually um, a process. Yeah, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And it costs a lot of money. You've got to I register it as well. Exactly. Yeah. So currently, I'm, 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 I'm focusing on sort of using that to clean as many shoes as I can. And then once maybe I've raised enough capital, I will then um, register as SABS, and then it will be easy to, to actually sell it in stores. Mm. Mm. All right, but you get in there. I'm afraid yeah. that's where we're going to leave it there. <laughs> so much, uh, you know, uh, issues to cover on our mm, interview, mm. but due to time constraints, that's where we're going to leave it this morning. <laughs> no, there you have it. We're speaking to Mwemelele Mutangwa. At the age of 23, he's a master's student and entrepreneur, um, an author in award winner. He recently flew to China, like he was explaining uh, to us here on or just now here on morning live uh, whereby he presented a mathematical model that he formulated for his masters of science in sustainable process engineering well i believe we're taking a break morning life continues after this don't go away